This video may contain offensive language or be frightening to some viewers. Viewer discretion is recommended. I had this doll for quite a while now. It was a beautiful porcelain doll. You know, the way that most porcelain dolls look like. It was just like that. Wavy long blonde curls, black eyes, a beautiful pink and red dress, with a typical headband with lace around the edges. It was a doll I had received from my mother at an early age. At that age, I had always thought it was such a pretty doll, a perfect look. My grandmother had almost 50 dolls of that kind, all of them beautiful, perfect porcelain dolls. But this one in particular, the blonde with the red dress, I will always remember, because this is the one that would be the death of me. I had lived alone for quite a while now. I had just gotten into college, seeing my whole life lay in front of me, and all I had to do was just go and pick what I wanted, easy as that. I was aiming for psychology, a subject I had started to respect and enjoy over the last three years. Seeing as my mother was a nurse, and my dad a therapist, it was an obvious choice for me. But moving so far away from all my friends and family wasn't as easy as I thought. Sure, my roommate was a nice person, but maybe not as chatty as I had hoped. I wasn't a person to just sit quietly in my room and never speak until I had to. I enjoyed getting out, seeing friends, but I didn't have any time or friends around. No one would talk to me unless I wanted help from my teacher in school or my roommate had forgotten to buy milk. It was lonely to say the least. Homework was the only thing to keep me distracted from feeling lonely. I didn't have time to try to even make friends. Friends was a silly thing after all. I didn't have time to go and party, maybe find somebody. It was worthless either way, and my dad would skin me alive if I didn't keep my focus on the schoolwork. The only thing I had brought from home to remind me of my family was that doll. The girlish toy was displayed on my desk in front of my bed, smiling towards me when I needed someone to talk to, or just watch over me as I slept. It was me and that doll the whole time. That damn ugly doll. As time went on, I started to pull myself more and more away from any human contact as possible. The schoolwork was getting over my head, the regret of going here had begun filling my mind. But I couldn't quit now and go home, not after my parents had paid everything for my college and car to get here. I just had to stay and make the best out of it. I really tried hard, but with each day, the hatred of other people took hold of me, and I would need hours alone, just sitting in my room to cool off. It was getting harder to get out each day. My roommate despised me. I could tell, but I couldn't blame her. I was acting like a jerk. I refused to do my share of the daily chores, wiping the floors, taking out the trash, but I couldn't do it. I was being pulled into a dark hole. And with the loneliness, 
came the paranoia. At first, I accepted being lonely, but it had reached that point where I started to realise my dumb behaviour. Trying to reach out to people to tell them that I wasn't feeling alright. There was only stress, and nobody had time to talk to a stupid college student. It was only the nerves. I hoped it was. I locked myself in my room, and I couldn't go out anymore. I had to send to my teachers and cancel my classes, day after day. But it didn't matter. They didn't send anything in search of me. So I just kept spinning in my room, day after day, week after week. It was an evil circle I couldn't get out of. Then it happened. My room had been my cage. I wouldn't eat. I couldn't. It even reached that point where my roommate would come and knock on my door to see if everything was okay. But I didn't open it up. I just yelled back in reply that she should go away. And she did. She didn't care enough to make a second attempt. She never knocked on my door again. It was just me. Me and my doll, watching over me and every breath I took. Then there was that night. This night, actually. It was a night I was so used to spending, alone. I didn't even bother trying to turn on the lights as I stepped from my bed and pulled on my sweater and a pair of untied Converse shoes before I made my way out of my room, which I hadn't left in so many days. I needed fresh air and my window was jammed and unable to be opened. It was in the middle of the night, maybe even morning. It was still dark outside, so I assumed it was still night, even though I hadn't checked the time yet. I couldn't care less. Anyway, it was a pain in the ass to come out of my room to not wake my stupid roommate up. All I needed was to get out for a minute or two, and get some air, maybe go out and buy some cigarettes. I had promised myself to stop smoking, but lately, that was the only thing I had been doing. Smoking. I only snuck out late at night to go and get some new cigs. It was a bad thing, I knew, but it was the only thing to keep me going and kept me awake and sane. But that particular night, there was something strange. Someone had unlocked the gate out to the street. It hadn't happened before, and I thought the landlord held a hard hand to keep it locked at all times. Didn't bother, just pushed the little red box out of my pocket and started smoking. The good thing about the night was that there was no one around. No one to annoy me with their stupid voices. It was quiet. Maybe just a car driving by, but then no more than that. It was peaceful. A few minutes after gaining some cold on my warm skin and some smoke inside my lungs, I decided to go back in and maybe try to watch some television. Nothing good aired at night, but it was always worth a try. I stepped back into the building and shrugged off the last bit of unwanted cold, making myself ready to sneak back into my room. But as soon as I came to the staircase, there was something in the way. Or someone. Someone was standing on the stairs, I had to admit, it did scare me to some point, but a second later I was back to my not giving a shit attitude and tried to walk up the stairs without confronting the person standing in the way. 
At first I thought it was my roommate, but the shadow of the person was too... manly. Too big to be the petite roommate I knew. I tried to pass the odd stranger and just slightly bumped my elbow into his, but he didn't move or speak. He just stood there. It was creeping me out. The scenario was too freaky, but of course there were other students in this apartment building just waiting to scare the shit out of some other poor first year student, but I wasn't the one to be fooled. I didn't stop until I heard a sound. It was one of those sounds where it just causes your concentration to break shut. It was distracting, scaring, unnerving. I couldn't continue so I just froze in position and tried to turn around to face him. At first there was a cracking sound. The sound that had startled me. Then there was sobbing. A young man's voice of sobbing. But it wasn't human. Yeah, maybe to some degree. But the voice was pitching up. Like it was breaking through a bad static screen. I stood only a few steps away from the man in the shadow. I wanted to break away from my sudden frozen state of mind. But I couldn't. I was stuck, like my feet had been nailed to the stairs. I was trying to speak, but he spoke before I had the chance to. It was getting clearer to see now, since spending some more time in the darkness. My vision was beginning to clear. He was wearing some kind of jacket. Black. Everything black. A sewn cap with strings falling out from a hole in the back, also black. His hair was torn but long, like he hadn't been able to cut it for a long time or showered it. His appearance was etching inside my mind, but his voice appeared like a dagger in my ears. When he spoke, he made off another static noise, like a broken radio. But he spoke in words. I tried to calm myself down, but I was already too scared to try to bring myself to relax. You're here alone, aren't you? I swallowed hard. The thought of somebody spying on me this entire time was filling my head with the urge to vomit, feeling disgusted by this man and his voice. I just shook my head. No response. I couldn't give him a reply. I should have. Maybe it could have changed this whole situation for the better. Maybe if I hadn't been there now, scared for my life. But I was and he knew that as well. But when I didn't give him the response he expected, he turned to me, and his sight was one of the most terrifying yet fascinating faces I had ever seen. He wasn't scarred or wounded in any way to make me feel uncomfortable by his appearance, but his eyes and his mouth there was a weird glow, a golden orange glow. It filled both his eyeballs and his mouth, his teeth shining through in a bright yellow light. It glowed in the dark and cast a light across us, on the stairs, the floor, on me. And I could see his smirk on his grey pained face. That's when I snapped. It wasn't human, and I had to get away from here. I broke through the invisible bonds and threw myself up the stairs, running up quickly as my untied shoes slammed against the wooden floor. I fled to my room without any second thought, 
Hopefully, my roommate that I had been ignoring for so many weeks would hear me and call the police. I closed the door after me and locked it, my stumbling feet bringing me across the floor and into the desk, knocking my precious family doll onto the floor. The porcelain broke and I gasped in panic, trying to recollect myself and my thoughts. There was no more noise after I had slammed the door to my room. No roommate coming after me. No weird glowing man in the stairwell. Just me and my broken doll laying on the floor. I tried to scream or cry, call for any help at all. It wasn't real. I had become too crazy, insane. After spending so many months just being alone, this is what had happened. I was laying on the floor, broken and shattered to pieces. I didn't know what to believe anymore. I didn't sleep. I sat on the floor, pacing back and forth by crawling as best as I could. The cigarette from before now just sat like a needle in my throat. I was thirsty, but I couldn't move out to the kitchen to drink anything. Maybe he was there, still waiting for me to come out. But I wasn't moving out of my spot. I never did. After an hour of complete silence in the room, I began to calm down, and I stood up to try to recollect myself. There was still that feeling of being watched, and I knew that feeling all too well. The feeling of being paranoid and lonely all came down to this, a breakdown. Once I remembered the doll being broken, I immediately started to try to patch it together. It was like the only thing I could focus on, my best friend. The doll. I managed to find a needle and thread in my room and some glue to get the doll back to its former glory, but it wasn't easy. No matter how hard I tried, the doll would just fall apart again. It became an endless attempt of nothing. I tried again and again, but it would just fall into pieces. My only friend. I became so tired from the sudden panicking and the fixing of the doll. I just passed out on my bed, curled up together in a ball with the blanket over my head, somehow imagining that no monster under the bed could reach me now. All I wanted was to sleep. I didn't know he would come back. This time was different, however. This time, I welcomed it. I was tired of running all the time, and I would rather die in my sleep than face another day of being lonely again. And now with my only friend broken, what was I supposed to do? It was tiring the way he approached me this time. It was like I was sleeping, but I could still control my body, like a lucid dream. I wouldn't dare to step into another day. Tonight, it would end, just like I had been afraid it would. But I didn't care anymore. Didn't bother. I just wanted to have a long sleep, and never wake up again. Never face the loneliness again. He came back to me, with his hands guiding me up from my bed. He wrapped his mind around mine, as I tried to see. But the only thing I could see was his grey hands, holding mine tight. But suddenly there was a sensation I wasn't sure I could feel, of floating. Like a puppet, he cut two openings into my wrist. But it wasn't a cross, more like from the centre of my arm and down. 
He reached for something, muscled, something to peel out and hang on to. The bad thing was, I allowed him to do it. My struggle had become too much to bear with, and with the long pieces of muscle hanging out from the cuts on my wrists, he started to pull at them. He pulled at them like he wanted to control my body and arms. How it all came together in reaction to my nerve system and skeleton, he knew how it worked. Yet, there was no pain, no pain that filled my heart or body, just another piece of my mind staying at ease again. It was a wonderful feeling, it was like nothing else mattered, and as he continued to cut me open, he began to sing. They call me the puppeteer. My fingers are thin and my hands are stained with my tears. For the puppets I steer, with my strings and my dreams. It took me only a minute to lose every sense of my touch. My nerve system had been crushed under the hand of this man. This thing, breaking every bone in my body. I could feel him twisting my ribs and twisting my hip bones all for it to make it easier for him to turn me into what he saw me fitting to be. It was like the long pieces of torn muscle were strings, controlling my limbs and my head flailing from side to side. All I could see was his smile. So I smiled back. They call me the puppeteer. My body dark and my eyes hunger of gold. In my eyes, no one is alone, and with my strings and dreams, you shall be my friend too. The last thing I could feel was his hand tugging around my neck. Then, snap! At first I was afraid to see death approaching me this way. I had never thought of it this way. I would have said no and refused if I could have decided it on my own, but I didn't. I said yes. With a broken neck, death was just half a second away. Then there was nothing but a golden smile and his warm hands holding my strings as my body fell. Early the other morning, my roommate found me, dead. I had committed suicide by hanging myself off the ceiling fan, assuring my death. I had jumped from the bed. Beside me was that doll. The broken porcelain doll with the red dress and lovely blonde hair. You may be wondering how I'm writing this to you now, or how I found a way to contact you. I found it necessary to write down my story before I passed it on. This is my legacy. This is what I'm leaving behind. I couldn't stand the loneliness anymore. I couldn't stand facing the problems on my own. It took so long. Too long. Dear Mum and Dad, I'm sorry. The sky had darkened considerably, with only the most tenacious rays of dying light still passing the walls of corn. Somewhere in the distance, a woman's voice called out for her son. Hey Frank. What? I still don't get it, Frank. Frank sighed yet again.